And we are live here in Petawawa, Ontario for the Military Combatives Grappling Championships. This is the 2017 edition. We're here in Petawawa. Athletes are, are warming up and training. We have 112 participants here for the championships, the nationals, uh, from all elements, okay? From the Canadian Army, obviously. If you're watching this on the Canadian Army, make sure you hit like, make sure you hit share, make sure you comment and tag people that you know are interested in combat sports and the Canadian Armed Forces. We have the Canadian Army here, we have the Navy, the Canadian Navy, and the, the Royal Canadian Air Force, as well as Special Forces. All these participants will be partic participating today in an exciting, dynamic, grappling tournament event, okay? I'm just gonna give you a quick overview of, of what this event is all about. This is the 2017 Military Combatives Grappling Championship. It's a hand-to-hand -hand combat training exercise utilizing a tournament-style format that emphasizes the grappling technique found in all current military combatives uh, programs practiced throughout the Canadian Armed Forces. Okay, uh, since the tournament's inception in 2013, this uh, the gathering of soldiers, sailors, aviators, and special operations personnel from across the CAF, the Canadian Armed Forces, representing both the regular and reserve forces, has become the Force Premier Combatives Tournament. This is a can pa uh, a, a calf a pan calf event, okay, and it's a very unique one. I, I got to tell you because, uh, as I mentioned, it's, uh, it's it's including the Navy, it's including the Canadian Army, it's including the Royal Canadian uh, Air Force. Uh, and and uh, can self comes special forces from full-time members and um, and reserve members and they're all here folks to compete on the tatamis in military combatives if you're familiar with any form of grappling sport be it judo be it jujitsu be it sambo be it catch wrestling you name it all aspects niniwaza base brazilian jiu-jitsu so on and so forth you're going to see this in a no-gi format within the the concept of, of military combatives we'll discuss the rules as as i continue on giving you an overview of this uh it's popularly this event has gotten really really popular we were here uh, yesterday to talking to organizers and they explained that year to year the number of participants has grown the the number of interest from from current members from reserve members from the general public they want to see this they want to be involved they want to partake in in this event and exc it's exciting to see this so if you know someone out there who wants who's interested about military combat make sure you hit share right now on facebook make sure you tag them make sure you leave a comment or question we will try to answer your questions uh or or, or comments please stay positive make sure you hashtag strong proud ready and again make sure you're going to hear this all day folks make sure you tag us and you share and like our page okay so combatives represents the essence of the warfighter and is a symbol of the canadian armed forces ongoing commitment to the incalculation of true warrior culture across all ranks and trades so this is as i mentioned it's a grappling tournament here uh, 112 competitors in, uh, in for, for, for the men's division, there's seven weight classes from featherweight, which is 145 pounds, all the way to super heavyweight, that's 220 and above, of course. And for the women's division, we have um, we have three three weight divisions from straw weight, that's 115 pounds, all the way to heavyweight, which is 131 pounds. Now, uh, quickly, just to give you an overview, obviously there's different streams of competition. For beginners, there's there's people who've only been training for, for under a year. We, we will have them here competing in the beginner stream. For intermediate grapplers, for people who have about a year to three years of, of experience in, in various grappling uh, sports, combatives uh, obviously included, they'll be competing in the intermediate stream. And of course, the advanced level, that's for grapplers who've been keep competing for three years or more. Uh, we will have them representing. And it's gonna be interesting for you as a fan uh, and if you were, or possibly even a practitioner or someone who's interested to see the difference between the the beginners in terms of how they lock up, what kind of throws they execute, uh, you know, the, the finesse in, in being able to throw the opponent, the transition to, to the osikome or, or to the pinning technique, to the side control, to, to, to obviously sequencing and setting up for an armbar finish, as well as the intermediate level. You're going to see some interesting, more experienced grapplers attempting, uh, you know, bolder uh, submission holds and more explosive throws and the advanced division is where it really gets interesting because you're going to have people with over three years experience 
who grapple actively uh, you know for, for a long time who understands them uh, who are people who understand the many layers and, and elements of, of, uh, of grappling psychologically physically uh, you know knowing how to play the game understanding the, the, the scoring system and we'll get into that right now so as I mentioned experience is based upon a combination of a competitor's total training time and formal instru uh, instruction in combat grappling arts such as Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, such as Judo, such as wrestling, we're talking freestyle or Greco-Roman wrestling, as well as Japanese Jiu Jitsu, Sambo, and so on. So, how do you win a match? Well, it's quite simple. For, for those who've seen, uh, who've, who've attended various grappling events, you might be familiar with this, or even for those who watch mixed martial arts, there's some similarities. Obviously, there's no striking here, it's all grappling uh, based. You win by way of submission. If you get your opponent in an arm bar, in a, in a knee bar, uh, if you choke your opponent, you know, the opponent has to tap. So you can win by submission, essentially. You can win by, by the referee stopping the bout, okay, or the match. And you can also win by points. Yes, there are points in, in grappling, and we'll give you a quick overview here of uh, the, the scoring system. Uh, you can win, uh, you can score two points if you take down your opponent. Now, interesting point here in regards to takedown there's two types of takedowns there's dominant takedowns and there's the non-dominant takedown i'll give you a quick example here a non-dominant takedown let's say you're going for an inside trip an uchigari in judo and you land in your opponent's guard okay that is not a dominant takedown obviously you took your opponent down but you did not uh control and transition in, in and stabilize it you know taking someone down and landing in in their guard does not mean you fully threw them down they countered or, or they managed to, to put you in their guard as you were throwing them or, or shortly after. You have to essentially be able to stabilize the throw and transition into uh, side control or, 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 um, or mount after throwing, right? So if I go for an inside trip, example, and I, la and I land in your guard, uh, I get two points. However, if I go for an Osoto Gary, okay, if I go for an outside or um, Sasai, which, uh, which, which are just leg uh, Ashiwaza trips, okay, which are leg trips. You'll see a lot of this uh, here because uh, you'll, see, you'll notice uh, this is a no-gi tournament. People are not wearing traditional judo or jiu-jitsu gis. So you're going to see a lot of two-on-ones, a lot of uh, working the arm. So I'm, I'm hoping to see a lot of uh, interesting throws out here, potentially a lot of leg trips uh, and, and Ashiwaza technique. So... I go for an Osatogare and I clearly throw you on your back. You land flat on your back and from there I transition, let's say to side control, and I stabilize it for three seconds. The ref will, will count that as a dominant throw and it will award me three points. Another way to get three points is let's say after I throw you and, and the ref gives me three points and then I transition to knee on belly control, which is essentially the knee on, across my opponent's belly uh, as I'm on the ground, painting them more or less with my knee can be on the, high, on the chest or the stomach, for, and I stabilize for three seconds, I get three points. A sweep, let's say uh, you're in my guard, okay, I'm lying on my back with, with my legs in, in guard position, controlling your hips and, and, uh, and stomach. If I sweep you, if I essentially uh, reverse you from that position, be it from open or closed guard or half guard, and I clearly get the sweep and I transition you. And, you, and you'll see this, we'll, we'll call this out as, as you see it for those who are not familiar. Uh, I get three points for that. Now, if you're in my guard and it's a closed guard, for example, and I have my legs wrapped around you and you want to get, that, get out of that position to transition into side control or, or whatever else, you get, essentially, you get three points for passing my guard. Now, mount. Let's say you get mount, so you, you're in side control and then you want to transition to mount, uh, which is more or less sitting on top of my chest. You will get awarded four points as long as your knees are on the ground. So you, you'll notice as we go through some matches today that people will, will be obviously doing all sorts of these uh, uh, moves and transitions and, and pinning techniques, setting up for, for submissions ideally but also scoring points, so we'll, we'll call it out. Uh, rear mount is when you're going for a rear, niche, rear, rear naked choke with seat belt on, uh, and you stabilize that and you have control, you get four points. So, I mean, these are major points. Four points for a rear mount or a mount is, is quite significant. Now, here's where it gets really interesting. Stalling. I'm gonna read uh, the definition here. Stalling is defined as using the clock to your advantage. Fighters are expected to continue to actively improve their position and or attempt to submit their opponent. 
If a fighter is judged by a referee to be stalling, he or she will be warned three times, after which their opponent will be awarded one point. At this point, the match will be stopped. Both competitors stood up and the, and the, the match resumed. So stalling is definitely not encouraged here. Uh, it's, it's, um, it's not to your advantage to stall and, and to try to use the clock. Obviously, you, you're going to be seeing potentially uh, if you've been to grappling tournaments, especially gi-based grappling tournaments, ni Niwaza-based jiu-jitsu, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, for example, people will tend to stall or, or other forms of, of uh, grappling sports to use the clock to your advantage. There's an advantage, of course, w with that, but it's not encouraged. It's not realistic. This is a submission-based sport. We want, we want uh, these uh, military combatives, competitors, to, to be able to showcase their dominant, their dominant technique, their dominant... Uh, you know, state of mind when it comes to grappling. And stalling is definitely not uh, showing that. It's not part of that philosophy. It's, uh, it's basically chicking it out. No offense to chickens. Or if anyone's a chicken, just joking here, I'm trying to be funny. It's Saturday morning, but you know what I mean? There ain't no stalling out here. Okay, moving on. Passivity. This is very interesting. Now, obviously, if you're Tachiwaza, if you're stand up technique, if you're a judoka, if you're a sambo player, if you're a wrestler, freestyle or, or Greco-Roman Greco wrestler, you can go into a tournament and throw an opponent uh, and, and disengage from, from groundwork. Let's say you wanted to just score points that way. People tend to do that. And in this tournament here, that is not encouraged. Passivity, in this case, uh, as a grappler, let's say I take you down and, and I decide not to engage in the groundwork and the Niwaza aspect of, of the match, and I keep standing up, then I am clearly not fully engaging in the match. I'm being passive. And the referee, I'll, I'll read the official line here, uh, fighters disengaging from top position and allows his or her opponent to regain his or her feet, the referee awards two points to the other fighter. So this is really interesting because it's essentially saying that if you take your opponent down, if you have the ability, and everyone here does, to take their opponent down, they should be able to, to transition into ground work, uh, be it attempting to gain a, you know, uh, stabilize the position from side control or transition into, or set up an arm bar or what have you, right? So you can't just throw your opponent, to get, get your points, throw, you know, to get uh, a Soto Gary or, or you know, uh, any form of trip, inside trip, whatever, uh, and, and leave your opponent on the ground. We want you to continue to grapple because the fight continues, right? So passivity, passivity is, is a, a faux pas ici. Uh, now, obviously, there are some techniques that are prohibited, illegal techniques. I'll go quickly over them, okay? Uh, a guard slam. So someone pulls guard. No one, I mean, no one here uh, hopefully will pull guard. Uh, but let's say someone pulls guard and say they're in your guard and you're standing up. You cannot slam them and drop them on, on the back of their heads. That would give them a concussion. No cervical slams, essentially. This is a very safe sport, and this is why we have a list of, of rules, obviously for points, but also a list of, of moves and techniques that are banned from, from military combatants. So guard slams, we don't want any of that. Finger or, or toe locks, we don't want any of that. Heel hooks. So, Heel hook is a submission hold, uh, a t twisting of, of, uh, of the heel. It's a very, very uh, effective uh, form of submission, but it's actually quite dangerous. You can severely injure a competitor. Uh, I mean, you could be off for, for a year, six months to a year. Uh, you know, if, if someone has applied a heel hook and essentially ripped your, your ACL and, and entire leg. Uh, so heel hooks obviously banned. That, that's very good because we don't want anyone here getting, getting seriously injured. This is a sport. This is, uh, this is military combatives and uh, no heel hooks. So uh, another thing is over guard guillotine, none of that. Uh, no toe holds, of course, as I mentioned, no cervical suplexes, no smothering of your opponent's mouth, none of that, obviously, uh, and no face crush. So each match will consist of uh, one round, uh, that's five minutes. And uh, yeah, so these are, I've just gave you kind of an overview of, uh, of the rules of the military uh, combatives here, the military combatives grappling championship. If you're joining us right now, you, you are watching uh, just the, the beginning of the tournament here. Fighters are warming up. There's lots of people here in attendance. 
Uh, we're here in Petawawa, as I mentioned. There's a lot of people. And we were here last night, and people were training. There was an open role session, an open training session at uh, 7 p.m. And you should have been here. There were, it was a very, very warm room. There were lots of people in the tatamis fighting and competing and training and warming up for for, for today's competition. It was very, very dynamic. A lot of them, uh, half of the crew were, were wearing geese, uh, judo jiu-jitsu geese, and the other half were, were no geese or just t-shirts and shorts, preparing and, and chaining different, you know, takedowns, different. Okay. So I'm reading some comments here on, uh, on Facebook. Uh, someone has asked if uh, if this was uh, only Reg Force. No, this this championship, this annual championship, is not just Reg Force. We have members, uh, uh, we have reservists as well. And uh, what's interesting is we have everyone from a private all the way to to a colonel uh, we're representing out here on the tatamis. This is a pan calf event, truly a pan calf event, uh, and it's very exciting to see that uh, we're seeing members of. The Canadian Army, you're watching this on Canadian Army, make sure you hit share. Um, members of the Navy and, and Special Forces all competing here on the mat. So the competition has begun. We're watching here the first tatami, tatami. The gentleman in the black hair just went for a takedown. The, the referees just awarded him two points. As I mentioned, because uh, it was a non-dominant takedown. He's transitioning now into side control. Side control here, the ref awards him three points. I guess, I guess that was a correction off of the uh, trip there. He's got knee on stomach control. He's going to transition potentially to mount. He's been awarded three points for, for that uh, knee on stomach. He's transitioning to north-south. In this position here, he could be looking for an armbar, a double wrist lock. Ude Garami in judo. He's applying it. He's very, in a very, very dominant position with the gentleman in black. You can see that the man at the bottom is, is trying to counter that by grabbing his own pants. But at this point, he's got the, the Udigarami here, the Kimura, and, the, and he's got that. He tapped. The opponent tapped. Very, very dominant performance here right from the takedown. The knee on stomach. Attacking the arm. Winner of the belt. So this is a tournament-based event. You're going to be seeing. We're going to be streaming all day, folks. So uh, in, in one-hour blocks. So if you missed the first block, don't worry. Uh, you're going to see the, the second block of, uh, of fights happening progressively throughout the day. Moving on to mat number one. This is the guard position I was talking about, as you see. The man at the bottom is, 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 has the guard applied. It's a closed guard. His legs are wrapped around his opponent. Competitor on the top uh, with the green shirt, Lawrence Scott. Uh, he's um, um, the competitor on the top. He's basically uh, 
I mean, there's a lot he can do here. Obviously, he's uh, scrambling for the attack of some sort. From this position, he could try to, you know, to, to break the guard and pa pass the guard. It's easier said than done. Gentleman at the bottom is uh, countering uh, his opponent's uh, attempt to, to choke him from the top. And again, he pulls guard after trying to, to gain control and, and potentially move to the top. His opponent has pulled guard. You're watching on uh, Facebook Live, Canadian Army Facebook Live. Make sure you hit share. If you're watching this right now, it's Saturday morning. Please hit share. Leave a comment. We'll read your comments. If you have any questions or, or comments, make sure you hit like. Make sure you tag your friends. I'm sure you, 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 know, you know people who love grappling sports, who are fans of, uh, of, of various styles of grappling sports. And of course, we're fans of the Canadian Armed Forces. Make sure you share this content. We want, we want you to share this content because this is a very, very entertaining sport, very engaging sport. And uh, why not share? Why not share? Sharing is caring, as some would say. All right, back to the competition here. The gentleman at the bottom has a very good guard game. He's not letting his opponent pass the guard. His opponent could even go for a leg lock right now from the top. He's in half guard position. Oh, there you go. He finally passed the guard. He's in side control. A very, very uh, comfortable position to be in for, for the gentleman on top. Nice reversal. Now he's in uh, top position here. He could be switching over to side control. Uh, Kezegatami scarf hold down, but he chooses to remain on top here. Side control again, which is a very good position to be in. You can set up many, many things from there. Even transitioning to mount as he's doing right now. The ref might reward him four points. Yes, he does after being able to stabilize that for, four, for uh, three seconds from here. He can do many things, like attack the, uh, the head, attack the, uh, the arms for submission, an arm lock. If you control the head, you control the body. Moving on to mat number six. As I mentioned before, this is a no-gi-based event. Nice attempt there for, I believe it was uh, a hip throw, but it got countered by his opponent. And that's a dominant throw and a dominant counter. Uh, transitioning to, to side control here. Takes a lot of patience to do these sort of, sorts of sports because when, when you're in a position that, that is not uh, comfortable, you have to be able to endure a lot of pressure and think and think how to escape, how to transition into a more uh, dominant position. As you can see here, the gentleman at the bottom is trying to, uh, has him in half guard, but he's trying to get full guard as he does right now, which is better for him at the bottom. From here, he can set up arm bars, kimuras, variety of chokes. As he's, yeah, he's going for the arm bar set up here. The kimura set up. But you see, the, the guy in the guard knows that, so he's not allowing him to do that. He wants to pass his guard now. If he passes his guard, how many points does he get? Three points. He does that successfully. Can he stabilize it? Referee awards three points. He's inside control, trying to isolate the arm. For what? A Kamura, a double wrist lock, a Ude Garami.
Notice how the, the gentleman at the bottom is, is pushing his elbow into uh, his opponent's hip, trying to create space to shrimp to get back into guard position. But at this point, he's applying Americana right here, Americana arm lock. And he's transition. oh, right into mount, right into mount. He'll get four points, referee awards four points. He's trying to buckle him off, but that's not working. This is a very, very uh, dominant position for, for, for anyone who's on mount. From there, you can uh, essentially you know, just sit on your opponent's stomach and uh, transition to, uh, to an arm bar. <laughs> Referee sets them back in the middle of the tatami mat. From here, he just has to be patient and... Oh, wait, he, he rolls them out successfully. But he manages to get his hooks in to get a rear mount. Doesn't secure, doesn't stabilize it. And he lands, look at this, right into mount. The, right into mount position again. Nice reversal. No points are awarded for reversals, in case you're wondering. Only uh, sweeps. A reversal is not a sweep. A sweep is only a sweep if it's uh, applied from guard. Half guard, a closed guard, or open guard, that is. I love these rules. These rules are great. If you're watching this and you're familiar with uh, IBJJF, International Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Federation rules, uh, you, you'll, you'll know, as I mentioned before, there's, there's a slight difference here for, for the, uh, the combative style. It's, it's more about dominating your opponent. So things like pulling guard, obviously, are, are not a showcase on one's ability to, to dominate the opponent. You have to be able to throw your opponent and stabilize and, and manage to transition into some sort of arm bar here. Or to, to, to manage into uh, some sort of submission. He's setting him up for a Kimura from guard, and I think he might have this. The closer you bring the, the arm to the body, the tighter the Kimura will be closer you bring the elbow to the body. He tapped via Kimura. We're going to see a lot of Kimuras. Kimuras, a double wrist lock and catch wrestling. In judo, it's called a Ude Garami. Make sure you share on Facebook. For, if you're watching this, this is the 2017 Military Combatives Grappling Championships in Petawawa, Ontario. If you like what you see, do hit share. Share the content. If you have a question, we'll be able to uh, answer your question here. Let's see what fans are saying. We're getting a lot of likes and a lot of shares. That's great. Make sure, feel free to tag Anyone you know that is a fan of any grappling sports, tag away, tag their name, let them know. We're going to have this all day long. We're going to be streaming uh, one-hour segments uh, throughout the day from 10 till about uh, 3. So if you missed the first uh, segment of the tournament, don't worry. We're going to be going live again and again and again. Hashtag strong, proud, ready. This is brought to you by the Canadian Army here. We're... As I mentioned, at the Military Combatives Grappling Championship, Championships, we're seeing competitors who are full-time members, reserve members. The Canadian Army, uh, sorry, yes, the Canadian Army, the Canadian Navy, the Royal Canadian Air Force, and the Special Forces. So this is truly a pan calf event here. Manages to secure a takedown, but it's a non-dominant takedown, and the ref awards him the two points. Ladies and gentlemen, the 
coaches uh, are calling for him to transition into mount. They want him to transition into mount, sliding his, uh, his knee across his opponent's stomach and transitioning all the way across into mount position. This will get him four points. But instead, he's, he's in crossbody, which, which is still a great position. He could be looking to set up uh, arm triangle. No, he's setting up. He's trying to go for mount, but his opponent at the bottom is very smart. He can see it coming, and he's trying to work for a half guard position here. Securing the leg, he doesn't want him to, to be able to go in full mount position. As I mentioned before, we have 112 competitors here. Lots of competitors, uh, and we will have an absolute division uh, matchup. So essentially, that's all the winners from all all the different uh, weight divisions and uh, levels of experience are going to be put in one stream at the end of the tournament, or, or the, the, the the last stream of uh, the last segment of the tournament will be the absolute division. And it's going to be dynamic because you're going to see both, uh, you know. Featherweights fighting super heavyweights, uh, you know, f a featherweight beginner versus a uh, super weight advanced. So, and, and you're going to see an interesting matchup here because usually people think size matters in the sport, and, and they do. But technique is uh, fundamental to to any sport, and this applies, of course, to to grappling. You have to know what you're doing as as a grappler, and uh, a lot of this is uh, is technical. Strength plays a role, so there's flexibility, endurance, mental toughness, right? Because I mentioned before, sometimes you're put in a very awkward position, very uh, stressful position, and you have to be calm, you have to be resilient, you have to be relentless. You have to be hashtag strong, proud, ready for just about anything. Opponent is on top, he's in half guard. Secures the underhooks. Opponent at the bottom uh, could be going for trying to isolate the arm. He grabs the head. If you control the head, you control the body. The most grappling sports. Seeing female competitors here. Setting up for a throw. She's got her, her back now, but there's still there. Nice, nice suplex to the side. She gets her hooks in. It's a very uh, smart transition here, getting your hooks in from uh, setting up here. Seat belt could be going for a rear naked choke. 
referee stops it because they're out of bounds. Let's see what happens now. Oh, yes, that's perfect. He's going to set him up right from uh, the position they were in uh, before. She had her hooks in, seatbelt position. Working for the armbar. She's setting up for the armbar. This is the, the importance of being flexible in grappling sports. It's key. You have to be flexible, regardless of what the weight division you're in. Flexibility is key. Being able to, to have uh, to set up any any form of submission for from arm bars and what have you. Flexibility is key. Competitor on top knows that she wants to go for the armbar. She will be trying to pass her guard here. And she puts her in half guard. You can still obviously attack from half guard. Especially if you have uh, long arms, you can do, you do all sorts of uh, arm bars and chokes. And, You're watching us on the Canadian Army Facebook page. If you are a fan of uh, grappling sports, this is the 2017 Military Combatives Grappling Championship. Make sure you hit share. Oh, are we going to see our first triangle choke of the, of the tournament? No. No triangle choke. There's the north-south position here. Applying that pressure from the top. But the gentleman at the bottom is not allowing him to escape uh, by, by using uh, his legs right into the hips, trying to ma maintain uh, guard, which he, he lost. His opponents got him in side control here. I spoke to, to this gentleman yesterday, and he mentioned that he's ready for this tournament. He's been competing here. I think this is his uh, third time at the Nationals here. Competing. Cross body position here. He hooks the head. Nice rest hold here. You can catch your breath, obviously. But you're always thinking. You're always thinking about what to do next. How do I execute my, my submission? He could have an anaconda choke here. He might be setting up an anaconda. But obviously, ah, yeah, it's an anaconda choke. A gator roll. Cross body position. Feel free to leave comments on, on our page on right on the stream. If you have any comments or questions. position is awarded four points I can tell uh, this guy here wants to go for an armbar he's got a very good dynamic guard game 
by the end of the match. Very good performance, very good match. And he wins by points. Let's see what people are saying. See those positive comments. If you're watching this, please share. Feel free to hit like. It's free, guys. Canadian Army Facebook. Feel free to cut and paste the link and drop it on any uh, grappling-related website, be it on Facebook or, or, or whatever else. Let's share this content. Let's get this content out. We know Canadians love grappling. We know they love the Canadian Armed Forces. Let's show them this great event here, the national championship here, the Military Combatives Grappling Championship. It started in 2013, and uh, this is the 2017 edition. It's gaining popularity year by year, both in terms of uh, participation rate and a uh, number of participants, as well as um, you know fans here. There's a lot of people in attendance wanting to see Wanting to see the grappling action. A non-dominant throw. Awarded two points, as you can see. He's got uh, half guard positioning there. He's trying to escape that half guard by using his other leg. I can't actually see what he's doing on the other side, but I believe he might have his, uh, his uh, arm around his opponent, uh, around his opponent's head. I can see now, yes, he's uh, essentially he's controlling the head. You control the head, you control the body. Back up to their feet. These are two very strong, physically strong competitors, obviously. Arm drags, arm drags. Let's see a two on one. He's setting up for an arm drag. Guillotine from the top. He could have this. Arch the back. He's got a guillotine choke. And he tapped to a guillotine choke. You can tell that grapplers, as, as they're grappling, as they're setting up a sequence of, of attacks, of submissions, that they gain confidence throughout the bout. They feel like, oh, I can go for a number. I can go, I can go for a guillotine choke. I can go for, you know, it's, it's all momentum. There's this inertia of enthusiasm as you set up and chain a sequence of... Uh, of, of moves and transitions, right? So there's there's aspects, obviously, of uh, sports psychology here, as you can imagine, because uh, it could be said that when you're in an awkward position, let's say someone, you know, is in a cross body and is just putting all their weight on top of you, or knee on stomach, you know, applying all that pressure on your chest, on your stomach, you know, you're having problems breathing. You have to calm down. You have to think of techniques. You have to, you know. You have to be hashtag strong, proud, ready for just about anything. All these participants here have been training all year long for, for this event. This is the premier grappling event for the Canadian Armed Forces. And it's great to see this, where we're seeing full-time reserve members of all ranks and, and trades and so on out here grappling on the tatamis. They're united on the tatamis, they're, they're here to compete and to showcase their, their warrior spirit here. Oh, he's setting up for a triangle choke, but uh, you can tell that uh, his opponent sees it coming, he blocks it, passes the guard. 
still has that leg hooked with his arm. Nice side control. Awarded three points for escaping the guard, or passing the guard, that is. If he goes knee on stomach, it's because he wants to go mount. Yeah, he's got a knee on stomach, going to mount, but switches all the way to the other side for an arm triangle, uh, from a uh, head and arm triangle. Beautiful transition right to the finish. I love that. That was uh, that was awesome. I thought he was going to go right into mount from knee on stomach, but no, he jumped across to the other side and set up for the uh, arm triangle choke. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful move. Don't you love it when you're just surprised by all the variations and, and all the you know all the different entries and, and setups for for the finish? It's very an unpredictable uh, sport, you know, because there's a lot of variables, obviously, but uh, it's like a game of chess for all you chess players. If there's any chess players out there, this is another form of chess playing, and I hope you're you're sharing and commenting because this is a form of physical and mental chess. And grappling is chess. And yes, there, believe it or not, there's grappling nerds out there. I consider myself to be a grappling nerd. If you're watching us uh, now, this is the 2017 Military Combatives Grappling Championship here in Petawawa, Ontario, Canada. If you're watching us different countries this is uh this is grappling here you're watching this from anywhere in the world all right let's let's see some action here Might see a nice big uh, trip here, leg trip. This, this, the guy in the black shirt does judo. Look at the way he's, he's moving. He has a judo background. I, I bet you five bucks he's got a judo background. The way he's moving his legs. Yeah, he's going for an inside trip. He attempted. He faked for an inside trip. He's flowing very naturally, in and out. He's very, very comfortable. He knows what he's doing. Everyone here knows what they're doing, but you know, you come from different streams of background, uh, different styles from Brazilian Jiu Jitsu to Judo to Sambo. They all have their kind of their thing, you know? And when you see a competitor moving really quickly, you see that footwork setting up, faking, faking the entry? Because he's setting up his opponent. Like in boxing, you know, he's faking. See, wow, beautiful, beautiful attempt there. He wanted to go for a hip throw, but then he switched for a leg sweep. But the gentleman on top of the red shirt counters. Look at this. Right to Niwaza. Hooks in. He's going for the finish here. He's going for a rear naked choke. This is like a classic judo versus Brazilian jiu-jitsu match here. Competitor with the red shirt is very, very comfortable in Niwaza. Niwaza's groundwork here. He could be setting up for a various thing here. Chokes and arm bars. He's got four points here because he's got rear rear uh, mount. Four points are, are awarded. And the thing about this position is obviously your legs are wrapped around the, your opponent's stomach. You're, you're squeezing that. You're squeezing the air out. You're not giving anyone, uh, your opponent, an inch for anything, you know? You're squeezing the air out of the opponent. Continuously applying pressure. I'm really digging this match here. These two are, are really, really showcasing quite uh, a, 
a very diverse style of uh, grappling techniques here. It's continuous back and forth. If you're watching us right now, make sure you hit that share button. Feel free to hit like and comment if you have any questions. We will try to address them here. We're at the 2017 Military Combatives Grappling Championship in Petawawa, Ontario. You're watching live on Canadian Army Facebook. He's going for a shoulder throw. Didn't work out for him. Opponent gets the back, transitions. Non-dominant throw. Lands in his opponent's uh, half guard. Now we're seeing open guard technique here. He's trying to isolate the arm for a potential sweep. Or Kimura, more arm bar variation. But uh, opponent in, in the red shirt is not giving it to him. He's pinning his legs, he's hooking on to his legs. He knows he's probably ahead in points. You see how he's gripping the back? He wants to turn him over. He's gripping the back as if that was a, a belt. Gripping the belt, encountering the opponent, throwing him to the side. Using the belt to pick up the opponent. You see this in judo, you see this in jiu-jitsu, as well as sambo. But this is a no-gi event, folks. No gis here. A gi is what uh, jiu-jitsu and judo players wear. In sambo, it's called a kurtka. end of the match what an excellent grappling match this is this was very very dynamic i, I really enjoyed that for both from the stand-up to the niwaza from the tachiwaza to niwaza excellent match hashtag strong proud ready that was a great match i'm gonna say it one more. all right folks so thank you very much for for watching we're obviously going to be streaming throughout the entire day this is our first block of, uh, of, of, of the stream. So we'll be back in about 30 minutes or so. Um, thank you very much for watching. Feel free to leave comments. Feel free to keep sharing. And we'll be back with you in about 30 minutes. This is uh, the 2017 Grappling Championships, the Military Combatives Grappling Championships on Canadian Army Facebook Live. My name is German Sido, and uh, we're enjoying this here. Big shout outs to Doug Rotar and Master Corporal Visser. We're having a lot of fun here in Petawawa watching the best of the best grappling. And we'll be back all day. Thank you very much. Stay tuned for more. Hashtag strong, proud, ready.